Hey, and welcome back to the channel. And I think this is a great time to revive a series that actually did pretty well. And this is where I lift the veil on some things that are advertised without them really showing you the darker side of what is required. So today we are going to be talking about point travel. So I have the intro. Let's get into it. Welcome back to my dad's channel. If you're new here, make sure to click that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to share it. So points travel and free travel are touted on Instagram and YouTube shorts and TikTok and YouTube period by a lot of people claiming to quote unquote fly for free and stay places for free. Now, all of that is only kind of true because a lot of the times now with the hotels, nine times out of 10, if you get a straight redemption, Yes, I will give it to you that normally your points will cover all imposed taxes, occupancy taxes, so on and so forth, government imposed taxes. Your points will normally cover those, but you will also notice that with hotels, your redemption rates are far lower than you can get when using your points to book air travel. And air travel is what we're really going to be concentrating on here because you'll see a lot of talking heads. They'll get on and they'll tell you, I've taken 30 flights for absolutely free. I've flown to here, there and everywhere. I flew to the moon or whatever nonsense that they're trying to sell you because they want to sell you their uh, strategy on how to do it. So basically, it's like this is something that you can do if you simply sat down and learned it, but not until you get there strategy do you really find out the hidden costs behind free travel and that is what the darker side is so i'm a huge fan of points travel i redeem points for travel on business class planes so i'm a believer in it but if you look at some of my videos honestly i give you all of the actual numbers i don't just tell you that hey i flew to paris for free because technically it wasn't free. I had to put out money. So now, what is this money that they keep leaving out? So most people just think it's taxes. Yes, government imposed fees, AKA taxes, are a part of it. And that is something that you need to understand. When they talk about free travel, the free part is when you transfer your points in because points that you earn via spend in the United States are counted as a rebate and therefore are not taxable. That's how come, you know, you get people working the trick with the uh, Charles Schwab platinum card in order to get cash tax free. It is a rebate. So that part is free. Nine times out of 10, transferring your points, because I'm sure there's always a one off, transferring your points from a card issuer, Amex, Chase, uh, City or Built or whoever, that's free as well. So we're still in the realm of free. But when you actually book said award ticket, if you think for one second that any of these airline carriers are simply going to let you book something for free, save for a very extreme select few, and even they figure out how to get their money out of you. I got a bridge in Brooklyn I want to sell you. Dirt cheap, and I'm, you know, pressured to sell. So with all that being said, coming directly to the chase, there are two types of fees that you are going to incur at least two, and that is government imposed fees and carrier imposed fees. Now the government imposed fees we've already touched on, those are taxes. Because we live in the United States of America, when you redeem for a domestic ticket or even an international flight, well, depending on who you redeem it through the program, international flights originating from the United States of America, the Government imposed tax that you will have to pay cash out of pocket that most U.S. carriers will not allow you to cover with points is the 9-11 safety tax. Now, since the attacks of 9-11, those safety taxes have been capped at a total of $11.20 per round trip. So now, even though even if you're not booking a round trip, you will get the familiar $5.60 that you tend to see attached to domestic bookings. So I've used British Airways in order to book domestic American airline flights. So it was like, uh, I think 12,000 points plus $5 of 60 cents. If I go from here, sunny Palm beach to Atlanta, I can do so for 8,000 points plus 
$5.60. Now, this is a pass-through government-imposed tax that literally you pay, the carrier collects, and they ship it right to the TSA for heightened security measures as far as 9-11 is concerned. Now, here's a rougher part of government-imposed taxes, and that being is that once you start going international, every country that you touch down and take off from gets to charge you a tax. So if you have an international trip that takes you from Atlanta to Toronto to Dublin to Charles de Gaulle to end up you know, in Dubai, if you take such a circuitous route, you now have to pay government imposed taxes from the United States, from Canada, from Ireland, from France, and when you land, actually no, it's only when you take off. So Dubai will leave you alone. So you have at least four countries, that's why I didn't put up that fourth finger, that will be hitting you in your pocket for government imposed fees. So with that being said, when you are booking award travel, the less stops, the better. So if you can get a direct flight, great. If you have a direct flight, or if you have a flight that stops multiple times in the same country, if the country's large enough, great, because you only get to pay it once. But the fact is, you don't want to stop in a ton of countries if you don't absolutely have to. It's going to make your trip super long, plus the fees associated with the ticket are going to be higher because with programs that allow you to book these award flights, they can decide whether to pass on the carrier fees. They have no choice on passing on the government fees. So just keep that in mind. So now speaking of carrier and post fees, one of the most popular carrier and post fees that everybody is probably familiar with is fuel costs or fuel surcharges. One of the most egregious offenders is British Airways. That's why most people, when they want to go to England, will actually fly into Paris or fly into Amsterdam, somewhere where they can catch a train into England to avoid some of just the astronomical carrier and post fees that are associated with award travel. So even if you can get a business class ticket to England from the US for 75,000 points, you're looking at anywhere from $600 to $1,000 in fees alone. At that point, you've pretty much burnt your points and kind of paid for an economy flight over there, which really defeats a lot of the purpose. So now the whole trick to that is finding a booking program that does not pass on those fees. Now, carrier imposed fees are imposed by the carrier, the metal that you fly. So if you use United, to book Lufthansa, the carrier and post fees that are gonna be associated with your ticket are not coming from United, they are coming from Lufthansa. They are imposed by the carrier, not by the booking program. Now, a third type of fee that you may find when doing rewards booking, and this is definitely something else that a lot of these talking heads who have flown to all points and wherever don't tell you about, are booking fees. Now those same free programs that you transfer your points to and you can book online, that's great when you're doing all the legwork. But when you pick up the phone and you call some of these booking programs because you wanna hold a flight and you wanna wait for your points to transfer over, once you start making them do work, understand that you can start imposing booking fees from programs that will otherwise let you do it for free as long as you take the chance of doing the space available booking online. So please keep that in mind when you're calling to reserve flights that they could be attaching a booking fee to said ticket. So it all depends on what they wanna charge. So your miles may vary. You definitely wanna keep an eye on that. This is just more hidden fees of free travel. So now we've talked about the programs. Well, at least I've mentioned the programs. So your preferred programs, you will see some programs get mentioned more than others. And the reason being is that some of these booking programs with their respective alliances will allow you to book award flights without passing on those carrier imposed fees to you. Like I said before, they don't have a choice with the government imposed fees, but some of these booking programs can choose to pass on the carrier imposed fees. And don't worry about the carriers because trust me, they will get it 
out of somebody else. Chances are those full full fare tickets, they will just squeeze it out of the people who pay for those, but they will get their fees. So don't worry, no one's getting put out in the cold, but some programs will pass them on and others won't. So because you're here and you're a part of this channel and we don't leave any money on the table, give me that. Well, I'm gonna give you some examples of ones that do and do not pass on carrier fees so that way you don't get a huge sticker shock when you do your first redemption. So bad news first, programs that pass on the carrier fees are some that you know very well, some that you've heard people rail against in the past. So let's just start with my favorite domestic carrier, but my not so favorite plan and that is Delta. Delta their carrier fees are insane. They will pass those on to you. And if you wanna cover them with points, that is what has helped to greatly devalue the Sky Mile into the Sky Peso because you will need upwards now, upwards of almost half a million points for some international trips that you can get for a fraction of that and a fraction of the fees. They have a lot of carrier fees that they will pass on to the customer. They are notorious for that. So Delta is one of my number one culprits. In addition to that, ANA. ANA is known for an amazing first class product. Their business class product, The Room, has just been the talk of the town. You can actually see it. The seats are enormous, but ANA passes on carrier and post fees. So it is fantastic the ability to get a trip from the United States to Tokyo for 90,000 points in their famed business class, but be prepared to play a very high amount of taxes in addition to that. Another carrier that passes on carrier fees is Singapore Airlines. If you book directly through them using a redemption, you will pay the fees that are associated with them. Don't get me wrong, a lot of these places have business and first class products that everybody wants to fly on, but these are the breaks. Another one is going to be Etihad and for the final is Emirates. You can actually look up a lot of their flights and while they will have decent point redemption rates, especially on Emirates, trust me, you wanna fly business class, you're gonna pay about a thousand dollars a person which same thing with British Airways. And that's literally not what we're trying to do. Another egregious culprit is going to be Virgin Atlantic in which carrier and post fees can be astronomical in some cases because they do have a saving grace. But those are going to be some of the programs that you're gonna look at. Now, does that make them bad? No. But the fact is you definitely still wanna look at these programs because sometimes they'll show you availability that you won't see in others so that at least you know that the flight is available. So don't discount them because of that. I don't particularly suggest booking through them if you have an alternative, but in some cases I've booked through them. Like for instance, my flight to Milan is going through Air France, who I booked the flight through for my wife and I, and they pass on carrier and post fees as well. I'm, so I'm sure I could have gotten the exact same flight for much less money out of pocket had I booked with somewhere else, but I had a transfer bonus. It just, it made sense to me. So that's just something to think about. Now for the good guys. These are programs that do not pass on carrier fees. So you will tend to get your redemptions here with little money out of pocket or at least less than the average. So you have United Mileage Plus. They do not pass on carrier fees. So when you use them to book other carriers in the Star Alliance system, you do not have to worry about the carrier fees. In addition to that, there's Avianca, yet another Star Alliance booking site where you can get some great deals. You can get Lufthansa first class on a 747 if you, you know, play your cards right. You can get wonderful deals from the United States to Europe with very low associated fees for business class and first class products because they do not pass on the carrier fares. And that's even with places that have very high carrier fares like the aforementioned Lufthansa. Another one is Air Canada, yet another Star Alliance booking site, but they do not pass on the fees as well. With Air Canada though, you do have to pay Canada's booking charge. So sometimes you'll pay anywhere from 40 to about a hundred and something dollars US equivalent, but either way, you're still not getting the carrier fares. And that includes airlines such as Emirates and Etihad that you book through where 
you won't get their carrier fees as well. So that is definitely a great place to look. So now it's not all about Star Alliance because remember what I told you about Virgin? Now with Virgin and their partnership in Sky Team and their great working relationship with Delta, if you use Virgin Atlantic to book Delta Metal coming out of the US onward, you actually don't get the carrier and post fees, but that's only when you use Virgin to book a Delta Bird. If you book any other metal through Virgin, you will be getting hit with carrier imposed fees. So that's something to keep in mind, especially if you're looking for Sky Team travel from the US abroad while doing a redemption through Virgin. If it's a, if it's a Delta Bird, once again, your fees out of pocket will be limited to $5.60. This is something I want to offer you guys because this is the darker side to redemption travel. Now, there's also a darker side to points and miles referral bonuses. I've covered these things as well, business cards and all sorts of things. But remember, anytime somebody advertises something that's too good to be true, oh, I've been to 57 places, or I have a very polished English accent, so that lets you know that I'm a world traveler. Trust me, they have paid something. A lot of them are kind of full of it. And what you want to do is look at myself and look at fellow YouTubers such as Luke's Points and Miles that give you the real cost of free travel. You know, there's always an imposed cost. And trust me, if anybody sees you getting anything for free, they are not going to like it. And as a final caveat, I did tell you that there are some very special cases and we are going to showcase Air Canada for this because I've done a booking through them and you can actually use your points to cover the government and post charges. Why I would suggest you not do that is because then it takes you the way of Delta because those points are not valued as much as paying for the reward so they will drive your redemption rate down just really hard it'll throw it off a cliff so if you have the money out of pocket it's only a fraction of what a business ticket's going to cost go ahead and just pay the cash trust me it's just you know less issues but i wanted to make sure that i included that now as always i'm going to hold said fingers up here because i want you to watch some more of my videos because i really have a lot to offer you i appreciate you if you stayed to the end of this one and that is it for the darker side of points travel.